This problem wants us to find the derivative using the limit process, but it's not asking us to plug in any values. So in this case, all they want is just the, the derivative, so that's just going to have x in it. All right, so I have square root of x plus 6. I need to put in x plus h in for x there. So when I do that, it's going to look like uh, this. Square root x plus h and then plus 6. Then minus f of x. f of x is our original function that we have there. Then the h goes in the bottom. All right, now as far as simplifying is concerned, can't do too much here. I can distribute the minus sign through. Let's go ahead and do that right now. I have a minus sign with the parentheses, but I'm going to go ahead and just clear this out and remove the parentheses to make it easier. So now we have this. So I've subtracted both things, both of them end up having a minus next to it. And I can cancel out the 6 and negative 6. So now I'm, I'm down to this one, the square root of x plus h minus square root of x all over h. Alright, so now what I need to do is I need to find this limit. We need to use the techniques from the previous uh, chapter when we talked about limits there, we need to apply the process, the algebraic process here because almost never are you going to get something where the, the derivative is undefined. You want to work out algebraically to clear out the h so that way you're not dividing by zero when you put that in there. We're going to do that here. We're going to multiply top and bottom by the conjugate. That's the technique whenever you have square roots involved. So conjugates, you're going to do square root of x plus h plus square root of x do the same thing on the bottom. Okay, so top and bottom, you're multiplying uh, by that. Okay, we're doing to do conjugates because that's a way we can clear out, clear everything out, and hopefully we should end up with an h that we can cancel out with the bottom. Let's work it out to make sure. All right, so on the top, when we multiply that through, this times this, uh, the, the root's going to cancel. You're going to be left with just x plus h. Middle terms are going to cancel, and you end up with a minus square root of x, and square root of x will give you just x. And then the bottom, I'm going to leave all this in the factored form because most likely we can cancel something out later. So here's what's going to happen. I have x and I have minus x. x and minus x are going to cancel. Now, I have the h's that are left over here. H's are going to cancel also, but again, I still got to keep a 1 up there because it's really 1 over 1 that I have down below. So here's what the problem will turn into. It's going to be limit. H goes to 0. I have a 1 on top. On the bottom, I have this right here. And if I put a 0 in there, now I'm not dividing by 0 anymore. That's why I wanted to get rid of that H on the bottom so now I can finish the problem. I'm going to put 0 in for top and bottom. So I get 0 in for h. So I have x plus 0 plus square root of x. That's going to give me square root of x and a square root of x. That's like terms. I can combine both of those. It's a 1 root x and a 1 root x. So when I add them together I get a 2 root x. So my answer, I would put f prime of x equals 1 over 2 square root of x. Okay, so this would be the derivative, which means, again, what does this mean? This is, a, this is a formula that I can use to find the slope in any place I want to on this right here, square root of x plus 6. So if I wanted to find, like, for instance, the slope of a tangent line, I can just pick a value of x, put in there, and I put that in here, and that will give me the, uh, the slope at that particular place. So again, this is my, my derivative, 1 over 2 squared x.